Hello, everyone. This is Adam from Windsor Public Library, and we are celebrating today National Museum Day on May 18th. I'm very excited to be talking about Museum Windsor and some of the great events and services the museum offers. And I have a special guest, if you don't mind providing yourself an introduction. Hi, I'm Matt Pritchard. I am the Museum Windsor Coordinator for Education and Public Programming. Matthew, thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this interview. And I have a lot of questions to ask. I just want to start off uh, asking about Chimchuck Museum because it's a museum that has a lot of history within the community. Uh, I'm just wondering what can people expect when visiting Chimchuck and what sort of uh, exhibitions and events are there at this facility? Well, the Chimchuck Museum, uh, we are very sort of, it's our exciting newer flagship museum with, with under the Museum Windsor umbrella. Uh, we were, our current um, permanent exhibits go back to about 2016 installed. So we're still fairly new and fresh with like sort of a modern layout. Um, we are a fairly young staff. So we like to have a lot of young programming, especially geared towards families. So between our permanent exhibits, our temporary exhibits, and our public programming, we sort of focus on something hopefully for everybody. Um, public programming can come from school groups visiting that are pre-booked to every May we have our, um, my work partner and I's favorite day, free comic book day, where we give it a free comic book to the first 300 people. We all dress up as different sort of comic book heroes I've been known to be Chewbacca or the Hulk before. And we just sort of have like an awesome nerd day showing that museums aren't just necessarily sort of that old stuffy kind of place that uh, sometimes people think they are. Um, as for exhibits, the Chimchuck Museum, actually our permanent exhibit is about 2,700 square feet. And it's called the River and Land Sustains Us, which is also the city of Windsor's motto. And we look at the history of the region from prehistoric times right up to modern times. So looking at sort of pre-human history, uh, first people's history, um, then going into sort of like when the Europeans and other settlers arrived, uh, fur trade, underground railroad, um, then into sort of the more modern stuff, including some automotive sports, like I said, a prohibition, a little bit of tastes of everything. And what other sort of educational programs can people expect to find at the Chimchuck Museum? Well, at any given day, if you're just sort of dropping in as a guest, as a family visiting, or, you know, a child and a parent, um, we have our hands-on history room, which we constantly are, I'm, I'm updating it with different crafts, uh, generally associated with what we have going on in our temporary exhibits, or whatever time of year it is. We also, our current um, temporary exhibits, which have been doing very well, is we have one right now called Navigating Our Way, which is maps of Windsor and Essex County. We have a collection of over 600 historic maps, and some of these maps go back hundreds and hundreds of years. This exhibit's gonna be here till probably June. Another exhibit that we have in right now that's fairly exciting is uh, we have the COVID-19 quilt that was on display down at City Hall. That uh, group uh, was formed, it was the Windsor Essex Sewing Force. And they took scraps of making homemade cloth masks and made this massive, massive quilt. And when I say massive, it stretches our entire main hall of the museum. It's mm -hmm. quite an uh, interesting thing to see and very current with what's going on in our uh, world around us. Um, and another exhibit that we have that we just launched and uh, just came out this month is Riverside 100. So we're celebrating the 100 years of the town of Riverside, Ontario. And originally, this was supposed to be launched last year, but because of COVID and being closed for a year, I got delayed a year. But we look at the history of how the town was incorporated from May 3rd, 1921 um, to its rich history, including a lot of roadhouses, prohibition, and looking at how it became um, part of the city of Windsor in 1966, but has still held on to its strong traditions and its own identity. 
That sounds very exciting. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be checking those exhibits out. Uh, we were talking a bit about Chimchuk, but I know, of course, Museum Windsor also has the locations of the Duffy Babe House and the uh, Francois Babe House. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about those buildings and how they ended up at becoming museum locations. Okay, so we have, um, it's the Francois Bobby House, which is located at 254 Pitt Street West, which is downtown. It's the oldest uh, building in downtown Windsor. And we also have the Duff Bobby House, which is located in Sandwich Town at 221 Mill. Starting with the Duff Bobby House, it was originally constructed in 1798. It's a half story Georgian style building. It currently stands as the oldest building in Windsor and one of the few remaining 18th century buildings in Ontario. It survived the War of 1812. Now the house belongs to the Heritage Trust and it came into the public center in the mid 1990s. Um, and there was a restoration going on. And they tried to restore it to as close on the outside as they could to when they believe it was created. Now we've been offering programs there since about the mid 1990s. There's an excellent, amazing volunteer group called Lays Anita Duff Bobby. And they do a lot of programs and stuff there as well. They're a very dedicated uh, volunteer group. Uh, most museums, you always tend to have uh, some volunteer groups and they are the core and backbone of a lot of great museums. Um, the amount of work and passion they bring to things is absolutely amazing. And there's actually some interesting news on the Duff Bobby House. In mm. 2021, so just last year, the City of Windsor has entered an agreement with the Ontario Heritage Trust to rent the first floor of the house. So we're currently preparing the space for tours to the public and for schools. Um, we're hoping to have more information on that launched in the summer. Now the Francois Bobby House, it's an interesting story, is it's the house downtown Windsor. Um, now his brother, uh, Jacques Bobby, owned the Duff Bobby House. So Francois sort of wanted, the younger brother wanted to outdo his brother. So currently it's a two-story brick Georgian revival uh, built in the year of 1812. Um, it's recognized uh, by the Historic Sites and Monument Board of Canada as a national historic site. Um, there has been major restorations and alterations undertaken starting in 1948 by the uh, firm of Shepherd and Mason. Uh, originally, the house actually had a couple fires over the years. It had changed um, sort of in the 1930s. It was abandoned. But yeah, and by the 1940s and 50s, they realized that it was a very important historic site. It had uh, saw action during the War of 1812. Um, and it became, uh, opened its doors as the Hiram Walker Historical Museum in 1958 uh, through an agreement with Hiram Walker and they funded the restoration. It's uh, owned by Windsor Historic Sites and operated um, by the city of Windsor. But in 1958, it was operated by the Windsor Public Library um, and the city took over governance in 2008. It was our main museum until 2016 when we expanded to the Chimchuk and the first floor of the Art Gallery of Windsor. So, And do you have a particular favorite exhibition or artifact? I think out of all of our collection, my favorite artifact would be the Chief Tecumseh flag. Now we don't have 100% provenance on it, but we do believe that this was the flag that was wrapped around Chief Tecumseh's body after he was killed at the Battle of Thames. And I've gone up to Ottawa a couple times and I've seen uh, the War Museum, they have Isaac Brock's uniform there, you know, the other 1812 hero. And they actually have a guy that just stands there and explains the uniform. And I always kind of brag that our smaller little museum, we have sort of the Chief Tecumseh flag. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh you know, it's interesting. A lot of people have ideas what they can expect to see when visiting a museum. What do you think would surprise a visitor to a museum Windsor site? Something that they may not expect to see being there? I think a lot of ways that we are fairly interactive. Um, for example, at the Francois Bobby House, we have a recreated cannon that fires a Nerf ball out, which is pretty cool. Um, here at the Chimchuk, we have a lot of 
The hands-on history room uh, provides a lot of opportunity for children to play and touch. Um, it's really cool. You can play with boats and build like the ambassador bridge over it. Uh, we have furs you can touch. We have different uh, First Nation artifacts, uh, arrowheads, um, different things like that that can be touched. Uh, so I think it's just the interactive part of it. It's not just sitting there reading text, which we do have a lot of text. If you want to read, we definitely do have that covered too. But it's more of a bright space that encourages sort of fun. What is the importance of museums to local communities? Number one, I think it's an important public space for the community. Uh, we work with different groups, especially with our temporary exhibits, um, and work with communities to try to create displays and exhibitions that represent them. Maybe certain groups that haven't been recognized in Windsor history in the past. We also become the storage locker for community memories and artifacts. We also become the link for interpretation, so we record them trying to collect stuff that reflects our diversity and be open, by, be open to all Windsor Essex County residents to give them a space they can come to enjoy. I think the museum also offers a space to ponder and a space to sort of reflect uh, not only on your own history, but the area's history uh, to expand, um, to remember, like if you look at our section that you know talks about residential schools and stuff, a place to sort of maybe offer areas to start maybe thinking of how you can help others heal. And we, we really know, and it's really important that the library is the same, is we in this world of this day and age of like internet and fake news and stuff, we really strive to be a trusted source of knowledge. Uh, with that said, Matthew, I want to talk about International Museum Day. It's coming up May 18th. So I'm wondering, I think I know the answer, but what would you recommend people do to celebrate this day? Yeah, number one, I'd say come and visit Museum Windsor. Uh, both you know, the Chimchuck Museum and the Francois Bobby House will be open. But our museum is also what we consider is a hub and spoke mentality. So we know that we are the biggest museum in Essex County. So we work with all the other little museums. So if you can't make it to the Chimchuck Museum or the Francois Bobby House, if you're out in the county, try to check out one of your local museums out there. Um, even the library, you have a lot of great history there. Excellent. And Matt, just before you go, uh, is there anything else that you want to touch upon that we haven't already discussed regarding Museum Windsor or International Museum Day? Feel free to come down. The Francois Bobby House is always free. Uh, the Chimchuck does have a mission, but we try to stay very, very um, as low as we possibly can with that. And I think we're very reasonable. A family can come for up to six people for $16.60. And the other thing is while you're here enjoying the museum, it's sort of a two for one building because the art gallery is in the second and third floor. So when you're done with history, if you want to go in the art and they have some really uh, unique sort of modern exhibits that they've been working hard installing recently too. So I highly recommend checking them out as well. Okay, great. Uh, Matt, again, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview, and I hope that everyone has a chance to visit a Museum Windsor site this International Museum Day. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.